stand of testing. Um, so the components of the internal control is based on uh, COSO. Um, and basically, <coughs> there are five areas. The control environment, um, which is management, right? In terms of, well, how does management, what message does management send to an, its employees about the importance of internal controls? Um, the risk assessment, not by the auditors, but that management has to assess, uh, perform a risk assessment. Because you cannot establish effective internal control procedures if you don't know where your risk is. Right. So that's like blindly just setting up procedures. You have to assess where your risk is. Because you don't want to set internal control, you don't want to set up an internal control policy for something that's insignificant, right? It's like it, it, could, it probably won't ever happen. So the chances of this happening is slim to none. But I'm going to have a control procedure anyway, because controls are expensive. Right? You have to have people, right? To have the separation duties, you have to have a certain number level of employees to be able to achieve that. So management should as, as put their effort toward where they have the greatest risk. So they should be performing a risk assessment. Control activities are the actual controls that are in place. Segregation of duties, authorization right, of transactions. Those are what we call control activities. Information and communication <clears throat> is, uh, as it says, the information uh, and the communication with, say, for example, uh, if you have an internal audit department, how are the results and who are the results uh, communicated to of those audits? Uh, I, I think I said before, uh, when I was an internal auditor, my department reported, or my director reported to the treasurer of the company. Right, because that, in that company, they wanted it to be uh, independent. So we did not report to the CFO or the controller. We reported directly to the treasurer. The treasurer had no responsibility over financial reporting. How is it handled? Once, uh, so for example, when we issued a report um, on internal controls, if there were any deficiencies, and certainly if there were any significant weaknesses noted, the unit or division that received the, the report had a specified amount of time to correct it. Before we, if it was a significant enough weakness or deficiency, uh, a material weakness I should say, they had to have, before we actually left the, the division, they had to have come up with a plan to address it. Right? That was a part of the report that we issued. So again, uh, that's what we mean by what, what are the uh, communications and information uh, that are generated. And monitoring is how, is internal, how are your controls monitored, monitored? Most companies will have uh, an internal audit department who's responsible uh, for doing uh, audits of internal controls. Um, you know, and they'll most times report to the audit committee. They should report to the audit committee. Um, so there's oversight. The monitoring is the oversight over the process. because. You, an auditor is going to look to see what is management doing, right? You don't want to find out as, a manage, as management that you have internal control issues when the auditors come in and tell you that. And that's a red flag for the auditors as well, that the, if management's not